Hello, my name's Nicola Stone and I am the Learning and Activity Manager at Seaton Tramway in East Devon and I'm also a director there and I lead on equality, diversity and inclusion. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit today about what we did as part of the Enliven project um, to work with people living with dementia and getting them out into the outside environment um, through a new activity called Wetlands Explorer. Um, a little bit to put it into context, if you've never visited the tramway before, we opened in the to the public in August 1970. Um, we actually uh, were in existence a long time before that at various locations around the country on leased land um, and ended up in Seaton Tramway when the branch line closed in 1966. Um, so we, uh, we actually bought the, the land and own the land now. Um, it's a three mile stretch from Seaton to Colleton. And we travel through the, uh, it's, it's, it's located on the Jurassic Coast, which is a beautiful part of the world, an area of outstanding na natural beauty. And um, we have 14 heritage style trams. The oldest one is dating from 1904. Um, it's a three mile route. We start at the, our very modern station at Seaton and we travel through to Colleton and we go so on the left hand side as you travel from south to north you'll pass through Seaton wetlands and on the right you, we travel past the Axe estuary so it really is a very beautiful part of the world. Um, in 2015, we became a charity, and um, I've just picked out a couple of our charitable objectives because they, they do link very well with this project. So the first one is to advance the education of the general public in the history, heritage, and operation of tramways and narrow gauge heritage trams, and in the native wildlife, flora, and fauna of Devon and Dorset, and that's the bit that really links with this project and also to advance the arts, culture, heritage and conservation in the southwest of England. So today, Seaton Tramway, um, we are a tourist attraction but we are also considered to be a public transport service. We attract over 90,000 visitors a year and that's growing year on year. Um, and in 2018 we opened this fantastic really modern station to replace a an old um, replica Edwardian terminus building. So this is our new state-of-the-art um, station which is really visible when you come into Seaton. As you come through towards the seafront, it's really is there right in front of you. Apart from running a, a regular tram service throughout, the, well, throughout most of the year, we do a whole range of special events um, and activities. So one of them is bird watching tram which is the one on the far side there. Uh, we also, over the last few years, we've been hosting the Natural Seaton Festival, uh, which takes place every July, well, over a weekend in July. Um, we have a, a story tram for uh, parents with small children. Uh, we have dinosaur shows, which have just taken place last weekend in the station. <coughs> And we have a memory tram for people with dementia and their carers. And then at Christmas, the whole of Seaton Tramway is transformed into a Christmas extravaganza with the Polar Express tram ride and um, the Colliton station, our Victorian station, at the far at the end of the line becomes the North Pole. <coughs> and it really is something quite <laughs> special. Um, so we've been on quite a journey um, with regard to accessibility and inclusion and we are, we're doing really quite well um, but the, this project has really helped us on that journey. So all of our, our stations are accessible with level or ramp access. We've built three new accessible trams in, in the 2000s um, over, a, over a period of three years. Uh, the problem with our heritage trams is going back to 1904, even up to 1950s and 60s, accessibility was not on the agenda. So our, most of our trams have got quite a high floor base and that's a problem for anyone who has a mobility problem. 
So we, we designed three big double-deckers which have a low floor base and wheelchair accessible bays and they are, they're accessible via a ramp. They are fantastic but they do, they're not great in bad weather because the wheelchair bays are open to the elements. So I'll talk a bit about that in a minute, how we're resolving that. Um, in 2023, so the end of last year, we actually enclosed one of those wheelchair bays, on, not on this tram, but on the, uh, we have a blue one that's exactly the same. So that, that's now enclosed, which means that people with mobility problems can actually travel in comfort now and not get soaked through, which was often the case because of the weather being so temperamental. Um, some other things we, we've done recently, um, we've had hearing loops installed and voice trans transfer systems at, at the ticket offices. We've got accessibility guides, visual guides, and easy read guides. Um, we've got BSL videos, British Sign Language videos available on iPads, which are available to hire, or to actually to borrow and hire. <coughs> Staff training is really important to us. So last year we, we had four um, disability related staff training sessions, which are open to all staff and also to our volunteers. Um, and then at the end of last year, we actually won the Visit Devon Gold Award for Accessible in and Inclusive Tourism. The previous year we'd won bronze, so we were really delighted to have gone up to gold. It was, it was, um, it was due to a lot of hard work. And we are a disability confident employer, um, and we're working our way now towards disability confident leader status as well. Um, just very quickly, to put this into context, some of our activities have been funded through the National Lottery Heritage Fund. Uh, in 2019, we were awarded an, a substantial grant, um, and that enabled us to open two new halt stations. One was at Riverside, which is where our depot is, where all the engineering takes place, and one is at Seaton Wetlands. Um, and they've both got level access for accessibility. And some of our new activities that were funded by the lottery are story tram, memory tram, and also a quiet tram for people who have sensory issues and need to just get away from the crowd. So those operate out of hours. Um, and we also operate uh, depot tours for uh, tram enthusiasts. And we've worked with a range of new audiences, um, schools, so we have a formal learning programme now, we work with people with dementia, people with autism, special interest groups, and young people. So we, we were running a young carers club for some time as well. So the lottery money has really enabled us to reach new audiences through lots of exciting new activities. Just some pictures. This is our new wetlands halt under construction. And you can see it's a level boardwalk and takes you down right through into the centre of the wetlands, where there is a fantastic reed-based centre and a discovery centre and also the toilets. So now people can get off the trams for the first time and actually ac access this natural environment, this beautiful nature reserve, and they don't <coughs> have to drive there. So it's being really well used, very, very popular with our visitors. And that's our oldest tram, tram 14, at our new Riverside port. Memory tram, um, this is what really started our work with people with dementia. Um, it runs every month and it basically involves a, um, a trip on a tram to our Colliton station where we have a, a lovely garden room where we do activities. And this one was our pilot memory tram. And um, it was two memory cafes came along and had a fantastic time. We had the <coughs> 1960s seaside Seaton. So um, we had a Nobly Knees competition. We had a 1960s style buffet. We had a, a singer who sang 1960s songs. And we had dancing in the aisles. And it really was a fantastic session. And we had, then had an opportunity to reminisce using items like you can see, uh, 1960s sort of home items, which triggered so many memories. It really was. Uh, a lovely session. As a result of being involved with people with dementia through the memory tram, we were contacted by the university and asked if we'd be involved with the Enliven project, and we were delighted. Um, we really wanted to broaden our dementia offer um, because we were aware that the people coming to the memory tram events 
mostly had fairly advanced dementia and we wanted to open it up to people who were still quite independent, living with dementia but loved being outdoors and didn't necessarily want to be coming to the tramway with a carer or in a group. So we made it dementia supportive rather than specifically for people with dementia. So it's actually open to anybody. Um, we wanted to access the expertise of the research group and also of, the, um, of e everyone involved, all the other businesses, the focus group, everybody. We wanted to learn more about dementia as a staff and we wanted to be able to, um, to engage more with the Seaton Wetlands team, which is actually East Devon District Council. We already were doing some activities with them, but we, wanted, we knew that this was a way of, of actually really cementing that partnership. Um, and also, it gave us an opportunity to share our experiences with people like you. Um, also, as a community organisation, we are a commercial organisation as well, as well as a charity, and we wanted to really show the local community that we are actually doing things for the local community, and we're not, it's not just about profit. This is our Wetlands Explorer poster, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what that involves. So, it was, as I say, it was a dementia supportive activity open to anybody, so there was no requirement for anybody to come with a carer. Um, we knew that we had the staff who had the training who could actually support this, um, and uh, so we were, for the first time, we were confident <coughs> enough to do that. It was free of charge because um, normally we would charge a small amount for these activities, but the funding allowed us to offer this free of charge. Um, we partnered with the Wetlands Rangers at Seaton Wetlands, and it involved five sessions, five visits from, so starting at Seaton, we took the tram, which is about a 12 minute journey to the wetlands. We got off at the wetlands and we walked into the wetlands reed base and had activities, a, a variety of different activities. And they were all themed around art, nature, or well-being. And here, I'm, I'm just going to go through the activities we did very quickly. So the first one was all about watercolour painting. And there you'll see Fran, who delivered that. Fran's here today. And she led a fantastic uh, uh, watercolour activity, which was perfectly pitched. Everybody was able to have a go, but there was no pressure to get involved. So there were a couple of people who were a little bit reluctant. There were some carers or spouses who said, I'm useless at art, I can't do anything, I, I just can't do it. Well, this picture here was done by one of, the, one of the men who came along with dementia. His wife, who was the one that said, there's no way, I, I, can't, I can't draw, she did that. And she did that in about an hour and um, went home with it. Everybody went home with something. And we had a lovely display at the end where everybody could see each other's work. And it really was um, a fantastic afternoon. So thank you to Fran. And Fran told me that she said that she was keen to work with us to deliver this session because she wanted to pilot a mindfulness activity around painting, which was in a place where it was possible to be at peace with your inner feelings and to express yourself on paper without the need to actually articulate the words. And so for, Se for her, Seaton Tramway and the Enliven Project enabled her to do that. The second session was an another art session led by one of the rangers at the wetlands, that was cyanotype art, and we all came away with a beautiful, I'm not going to go into what cyanotype is, but we came away with pictures like this which some people have now framed, I believe, and put on their walls. Um, in August, we did bird, bird watching. We, we're lucky to have one of our managers is a, an expert bird watcher who knows everything about bird watching. And he led a lovely activity where we went to the hides and were able to see some nesting avocets. Who, uh, these avocets have never, haven't been on the wetlands for many, many years, decades, I believe. And last year was the first time we had them breeding. And we were lucky to actually see them. We saw the parents and the babies. Mm -hmm. So that was really exciting. Um, and then we went back to the reed base and had a lovely activity, a really fun activity, how to draw birds, step by step, <laughs> led by me. And I'm not an artist, but I found it on the internet and we had lots of fun. <laughs> um, 
September we did some outdoor mindfulness, so that involved mm. listening to the rushes blowing in the wind, mm. listening to the birds. It was very quiet there. There were no other people there. Um, really, really lovely. We also did a mindful drawing activity where we, sh we closed our eyes, eyes and drew what was on the paper, you know, what would come into our minds without seeing what was on the paper. That was lots of fun. Lots of people worried about doing that, but actually it didn't matter because nobody looked at it. <laughs> and then we went back afterwards and we brewed some tea, some wild teas, which I have to say had mixed success. <laughs> some of them were really not very nice. Anyway, it was, it was fun. And then the last session in October was uh, a natural sculpture session and we had a lovely local man from Lyme Regis who came and, and did, he brought all his tools, his drills, his nuts and bolts and we made um, uh, structures out of natural materials and each one was completely different. Some were tiny, some were big and again everybody went home and sucked them. So what went well? Um, I would say that firstly we definitely attracted new people to the tramway that would never, I'm told, they told me themselves they would never have felt comfortable coming to an organisation like that because they would feel that they wouldn't know whether they would be looked after. Um, we were able to gather feedback and actually talk to people with dementia and work with people with dementia through the project to actually put this together which has been incredibly valuable. Um, some of the participants became regulars and actually have become, we've become quite good friends. Uh, we're still in touch, they want to come, come back again this year. Um, everybody tells me they learned something new, including the staff as well. So for us as, a, as a, an organisation, we learnt about dementia, but we also learnt new skills. Everybody <coughs> learnt something new, whether it was painting, sculptures, something about wildlife. Our partnership working with Seaton Wetlands has gone from strength, strength to strength and we are definitely going to be continuing this this year. Um, I see these sessions as being professional development for, for our staff and volunteers as well. We've learned so much about the value of working with people with dementia and what, what we need to do going forward to make small tweaks to our offer. And the facilities at the Wetlands worked out perfectly even though obviously being outside has its challenges and I'll talk about that. Some positive feedback from participants. Um, one lady, Rita, her husband Bill has got fairly advanced dementia. Um, she decided, we, we've also been involved in some filmmaking as part of Enliven and she cancelled one of his cognitive sessions so that she could come to this because she said it was of more benefit than actually the session itself. So I think that speaks volumes. Um, the other sets were a big hit. That was one that was one, um, the lady that drew that, painted that beautiful painting, she said the other sets were amazing. And most touching was Joyce, who is the wife of Keith, who has um, mildish dementia. She said, thank you for holding our hands on this experience. And for me, that, was, that said it all, that was the most important. It really built participants' confidence. We went from people who wouldn't take part in the first session to people who were coming to the last couple of sessions and couldn't wait to get there and were getting really stuck into those activities. So we were very pleased with that. And I'm told that it was sociable and fun. So there was always refreshments available with Marks and Spencer biscuits. And I'm told that that was really, they loved the biscuits. Um, what we learnt, we learnt definitely that there are benefits to being outside. The words that, that were, were um, coming up again and again was peace, having space and a rest from the everyday monotony, the difficulties, everything, you can just get away from it all. Um, we did learn that targeted marketing is very, very important for, for a company like ours because our, our first session didn't take place because we didn't market it to the right people and we didn't do it early enough. Word of mouth, I think this does grow through word of mouth as well, so that did happen with us. I think we also realised that walking, um, people who, who say walking is no problem, a 10 minute level walk is no problem, actually it can be a problem and we have to assume that there will be people who will start that walk from the tram 
and we'll get halfway and we'll struggle. So we are in future going to make sure we have wheelchairs available and we're going to install some small seats along the boardwalk so that people can have a seat, uh, have a rest if they need to. Um, I've got a tendency to over plan things because I'm worried that people will run out of things to do and get bored. And I've, this, is, this is so wrong. And I think this has come up again and again in some of the other talks. No need to rush. It's much better to allow time for talk and enjoyment and rest, and particularly when you're outdoors. So that is something that I've learned. Just plan for a few activities and see how it goes. See how it takes you. There's always more tea and biscuits, if in doubt. Um, need to allow time for talking and reminiscing. And for us, don't rely on the weather. We have had scorching weather where we thought we were all going to die of dehydration in the first session to really quite cold in July and feeling like we were going to be blown away. We have to make sure that everybody, when men be take bookings, they know that they have to look at the weather on the day and come prepared. Mm -hmm. And But actually, most people said, it's fine. Someone said to me, our skin's waterproof, it's fine. So, um, But as an organisation, we have to make sure there are things in place so that we, um, we're not caught out. Um, as a, again, as a company, it can be quite tricky if people make, do last minute cancellations because we have to get drivers in, we have to get staff in for these special events. I've had to change our way of thinking across the company because there is a tendency for people to all go mad, oh no, we're going to have to cancel, we haven't got enough people. What I'm having to train everybody to think <coughs> is actually, this, this involves people with dementia on the day they might not be able to make it. So we have to be more flexible. And I think that's a, a, a sea change now in our company. We started to think along those lines. Trust and confidence is built, familiarity. So if we can get the same people coming more or less each time, and having new people come as well, that core group really start to become confident and trust the staff. And that's really important for them. Um, and we don't ever, ever say that anyone has to do anything. They can come and just sit if they want to. And that some people do. They just come and sit and watch. The carers really need to feel looked after too. And I think that's what we're doing really well. They, they need to feel... If they need to chat to us, they can. And we did give lots of time to the carers because they often wanted to tell, tell us how they were feeling too. So, next steps. We are continuing in 2024 with the Wetlands Explorer. Um, we're continuing our partnership with the Wetlands. <coughs> We've um, got a new company called Dementia Adventure who have booked several sessions with us, um, which is fantastic. So they are a tourism company that organises holidays for people with dementia and a friend, spouse or carer. Um, so this is a new partnership. So that's through Enliven, I can honestly say that that wouldn't have happened if we hadn't been involved in this project. We're becoming more flexible in terms of the dates and times that we're offering the Wetlands Explorer. <coughs> we're going to market directly to GPs and hospitals, also care homes and memory cafes. And we are also, we've received some funding to help us build some new all-weather accessible trams. That's going to be uh, over several years, but we're on that journey. And these will be saloon trams, all weather. Nobody will feel cold or wet when they're travelling them. So that's something really exciting. <coughs> and finally, I just want to say thank you to the Enliven team because this has been a fabulous opportunity for Seaton Tramway and we've enjoyed every minute. Thank you.